And I would like to show you some of the examples that the little museums, the community museums uh, that uh, have been doing in order to safeguard their ICH or their valuable heritage. Um, and these are examples that uh, the, the center, the anthropology centers has engaged or has participated in the working. And I was fortunate to be part of that. Um, the first case that I would like to show you is from Lampang, um, a province in northern Thailand, not very far from here. And the monastery is a, a very charming place called Wat Lai Hin, <coughs> or <coughs> Lai Hin Monastery. So in addition to collect various religious objects and artifacts and archaeological objects, the museum has a project of building a new exhibition hall um, to display the living culture. And they have come together and discussed together with researchers from the center in order to select some of the things that they think valuable, significant, important that they, they want to put in the museum. And one of the things is the water irrigation system. This is very important in northern Thailand, which is a hilly area. And some area which is near the river will get the water, and some far from the river will not get the water. So there has to be a system by which all paddy fields get water from the same source. So they developed a very elaborate system of canals uh, that have to be duct so that water is channeled to all the fields. And all these canals have to be maintained every year, have to be cleaned every year, and they have to be managed. So each community, every year, they have to come together and clean the canal. And also they have to develop a system of community management. There is the chairman um, who has been selected, an elderly person who uh, takes care of the maintenance of the irrigation system. So in the process of uh, staging the new exhibition, the researchers as well as the community members uh, collect and document uh, the irrigation system. And we, uh, we help to I mean, collaborate in develop this map of uh, water irrigation system that is di displayed in the museum. The second case that I would like to uh, show you is uh, another museum in northern Thailand in the province of Payao. Um, now, this museum, uh, again, apart from its archaeological and artistic collections, um, the museum has discovered something very important. It has discovered the diary of one of the former abbots uh, who lived in the 19. Um, 19 and the early part of the 20th century. And at that time, it was a very important time uh, in Thai history when the centralization, the new system of provincial administration were, uh, was beginning to take place. And there were many, many major changes in the provinces. And this led to dissatisfaction in the province. And there were cases of uprising and rebellions in the provinces, especially the north, well, in the north and the northeast. Um, and there was one incident known as the Nyeo Uprising. Nyeo is the term that the, the northern Thai people called a group of people who have migrated from Burma. They are Thai-speaking people, uh, and they call themselves Thai or Thai Yai, but the northern people call them Nyeo. And the incident is known as the Nyeo Uprising. And according to official uh, record or official statement, it was like a raid, you know, by a group of neo bandits uh, went into the town of prayer and they started looting and they started killing officials. But in fact, if you look at local evidence, you have uh, get a, a different picture, a very complex uh, picture of why people were dissatisfied with the new system and what led to the uprising and what led to the violent uh, event, and uh, the records, the diary was discovered, and it's been translated to Northern Thai and also to uh, current uh, 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 Central Thai and published. And um, so in that book, if you read that book published by the museum, 
you will see the um, the evidence from the point of view from the voices of the local people, and also the museum collects something that is link that linked the um, the material to the non-material and linked the museum collection to the stories. And that is an old jacket. This is a 19th century jacket that belonged to one of the leaders of the Neo uprising. And well, one of the leaders of the Neo communities, he was accused by the authorities of leading or supporting the uprising. And in the end, he was executed, he was beheaded. Uh, but the community kept his jacket. And uh, so, you know, the, the jacket with the story and the diary of the abbot will tell a story of how local people perceive the uprising. And that is very, very import important. It gives history many, many sides of the story. And lastly, uh, how much more time do I have? Five minutes? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay, uh, last, the last case that you will, in fact, I'll, I'll probably just mention it, is the case of Salak Yom. It's a very important ceremony in a uh, uh, Yom community in northern Thailand. And one museum was uh, played a very important role in reviving uh, this ceremony. You'll get to hear more about it later, so I won't go into uh, so much details. Now, so we hear that there are small communities, and we hear that these uh, community museums, and these museums are very doing very interesting, very important work for the communities. So why, why do we talk about these museums and ICH now? Well, one of the things is that um, I think these museums need some kind of support and encouragement from outsider or external agencies, like you, know, you people, cultural practitioners, big museum curators and researchers, because they are facing, even if they are doing important work, they are facing many um, uh, serious challenges. The first one is that even though small museums have great potentials and they have great spirit, um, they have limited resources. Uh, they have limited funding, limited personnel, unlimited time. And also the question of sustainability is very, is very important. Um, and in, so in fact, small museums have gone through periods of ups and downs. And this is the term that I'd like, uh, the words that I'd like to quote, uh, it um, uh, belonged to one of the museum keepers. He said that the history of small museums is a history of fall and rise and fall and rise and fall and rise and fall and rise, and fall and rise ad infinitum. <coughs> And he said, there is no conclusion chapter. We always come back to chapter one, you know, come back to the beginning, there's no conclusion. Another challenge that you'll find in your study of small museums and in the communities is that in order to the museum to be strong, in order to, uh, you know, be able to mobilize resources, they need to have collaboration from various agencies within and outside of the community, you know, various relevant government agencies, community members, and schools, um, education institutions, and so on. And some of them manage to, uh, you know, have collaboration that works well, some don't, you know, so uh, this is another challenge. And another challenge, uh, there are a series of challenges, but I would just like to point out a couple. Another one is that heritage itself is not um, a sort of a ready-made or it's not a, uh, uh, a thing that people uh, see in the same way. You know, it's a very much contested issue and full of conflict of interest. There is a conflict between tradition and change, between the purpose of safeguarding and the purpose of commercializing, you know, gaining economic gain from heritage, which is important for the survival of a community that is not so well endowed. There is a conflict between museumizing, freezing culture, as well as letting culture uh, flow with its own dynamics, change with its own dynamics. So for example, um, this is a, a, an example of the revitalization of the Salak Yom, the ceremony that you've seen pictures and you will hear about. 
you get quotes from the head of the Buddhist organization saying that, you know, the the modern version, the current version, is far more superior to the ceremony that took place in the past. He said that in the past there were only local things, not so pretty, not so beautiful, not so valuable. The salak yom trees today are better, are more beautiful, are more valuable. So it's better today. But on the other hand, you have an interview and a quotation from Grandmother Ta, a community member who was 90 years old, and unfortunately she just passed away. And she said simply that, I wish it didn't turn out like this. Yeah, you know, that's very different reasons for this. So there are people who are for and people who are against uh, a kind of transformation of a ceremony. And just to mention briefly that uh, turning to uh, some of our programs in order to try to um, you know, understand these challenges and understand the work of local museums and trying to link tangible with intangible heritage. Um, the center has uh, uh, initiated a number of programs working with community museums. Uh, one is the digital database of local museums and you can um, access this database and uh, the database is available in Thai as well as in English. We have a project of research and development of small museum um, all over Thailand uh, doing museum ethnography. And that means uh, um, in-depth study of a museum, studying the uniqueness of each museum and trying to find out a way uh, to build capacity uh, with each museum I mean, in many different modalities. Uh, we have introduced an activity called Local Museums Festival, and that's been running uh, two times already. Um, uh, that's participated by a number of uh, museums in Thailand. The first time there were 70 museums, the second time over 50 museums, and each one present their heritage, their finding, their work uh, for urban people who know very little about small museums in the countryside so that they're, they're, you know, they, there is a communication between uh, these two group of people. Um, so um, to sum up, you know, these are the, uh, the sort of the development, the, the things that I have observed in the past eight or ten years working with museums and uh, which culminates in this training workshop, which is one uh, kind of one project within the broad uh, museum program of the center. Um, I think you can, you know, it's important to bear in mind that each museum is unique. You, you, it's very hard to find a kind of uh, ready-made solutions for all museums. So you have to appreciate the uniqueness and the diversity of museums and trying to understand each museum within the context of each community and each heritage. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, you will, you know, as museum curators, cultural practitioners, researchers, within the next two weeks, we can share and learn from each other, as well as learning from the communities that we are going to be working with, um, you know, a number of things. Among them are how communities identify and define their heritage and what is the significance and the value of each item of ICH. Bear in mind that you know, the item cannot be separated uh, out of context or separated between material and non-material. We would like you to ponder and uh, try to think about how museums can collaborate with various individuals, agencies, within and outside the community. So in order to do that, you have to know the profile of the communities, who are the important players within the community, which are the important cultural agencies within the community. So these are some of the questions that uh, you, know, you should take with you to your field study, to your case studies. And um, we would like you to think about how the ethnographic methodology that you will learn about, you know, the methodology for studying, understanding, documenting a community, as well as the documentation of ICH using audiovisual materials, audiovisual methodology or other methodology. How these methodologies can help the communities to safeguard as well as continue 
their cultural heritage in the way that they want to, you know, in the way that they can collaborate with their uh, fellow uh, community members and agency, and in the way that will create link between intangible and tangible, and link between uh, communities and people outside communities as yourself. So these are some of the questions that, you know, there will be many more questions. You have too many questions that you can answer. Uh, but these are some of the, I think, main questions that I would like to leave with you. And I hope that in the next two weeks, we will share with each other how we can come up with some of the answers to these questions. Thank you.